Hello everyone. Today in this video, I'm going to show you how to digitally sign your PowerShell scripts so that they are trusted on the devices that they're going to run on without any issues or warnings. So for this demo, what I'm going to use is this domain controller, which is also my certification authority, or we call it ADCS, Active Directory Certification Services, right? So if you look at my Windows 10 machine, and if you look at the execution policy, which is set right now, it's all signed. So basically what it means is uh, this machine can only run scripts which are digitally signed. And if there's any PowerShell script which, it's, which is not signed, then you're just going to get an error. So what I'm gonna do here is I have a very, very simple script, which I'm going to put it here. Right? So if I try to run the script, this is what I get. Cannot be loaded because it is not digitally signed. So this is what we're going to fix today. Right? So if you look at the content of the script, it's very, very simple. Right host, hello world. Right? So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to launch my certification authority. And if you go to the certificate templates, there's going to be a default certificate template which comes with the uh, ADCS installation. So what you need to do is right click on certificate templates and go to manage and we're looking for code sending certificate so let's duplicate this template and first thing that you want to do is uncheck this box so that you're not going to get any warnings or any pop-ups while you're making the changes on this template so certification authority i'm going to set it to 2012 r2 and compatible recipient i'm going to set it to 8.1 and above right and in the general settings, let's name our certificate template. In my case, I'm gonna call it lab code signing certificate. All right. And this validation validity period, it's going to depend on your own requirements. Uh, for me, one year is fine. And if you go to request handling, you can keep everything default, but just make this. Uh, just just check this box so that you can export your certificate later on. Under cryptography, I like to change it to RSA 2048 and hashing algorithm, let's set to SHA-256, right? Key attestation is fine. And if you go to extension, code signing should already be, already be part of application policies. But what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna double click on basic constraints and check this box, okay? And for the subject name, it can uh, either you can leave it uh, at its default, or you can, uh, uh, you know, get it from the uh, request body itself, right? And for the security, uh, basically you want to add the users uh, or the developers who are going to sign your certificates, or uh, basically the people who are actually going to write the scripts. So in my case. Uh, I'm gonna give the annual permissions to the administrator account because this is the account which I'm gonna use to sign all my scripts, all right? So this is fine and I'll simply click on apply, okay. All right, so now the certificate template is saved. Next, what we need to do is we need to publish it so that it's available for the users to enroll, right? So, okay. So this is the template. I click on OK. All right. So next, what you're going to do is you're going to use you're going to open the uh, certificate manager. So the shortcut is certmgr.msc. You could also use mm mmc and get the snap in, but I like to use the shortcuts certmgr.msc. Right. So next, what I'm going to do is click on all tasks and request new certificate. I click on next. Active Directory Enrollment Policy, click on Next again, and it's gonna show me the list of 
uh, certificate templates which is available uh, uh, for my account. In this case, I'm logged in with administrator account. Right. So let's wait for it to load. So as you can see, because we selected a, a subject name to be provided in the request, so we get this warning. Right. So in my case, I'm going to provide the common name as um, lab code. Or what I'm going to do is lab PowerShell scripts. OK, so same common I'm going to copy for the friendly name as well. And yeah, rest is fine. So we'll apply. OK. So select this template and click on enroll. All right. So within a few seconds, I should be able to get this certificate. Still enrolling. OK, it's enrolled. So this is the certificate which I got, right? And if you look at the enhanced key usage, you can see code signing OID here, all right? So this is fine. And you can also uh, check the thumbprint because we are going to need it later when we sign our templates. So it ends with 3DF50, all right? So next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this thumbprint, which is this, and put it right here. Right, so I've saved the certificate details in this variable. If I run it, as you can see, I get this certificate. So next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this command, which should already be available uh, by default in PowerShell. So I'm going to use this command to sign my PowerShell script. In this case, it's called test.ps1. And the content of uh, the script is this, right? All right. So my certificate is now digitally signed. So if I close this and reopen it, you can see that it's signed, all right? And also, if you want, you could use this PowerShell command to check whether the script is digitally signed. So it's basically get authentic code signature, file path. Here you give the path to your script so as you can see it's digitally signed and you can see the uh, certificate thumbprint details right so now this is digitally signed so let's see i'll copy the script to my windows 10 machine and i'll put it here right now let's try to run the script again and let's see what happens so now if you see we are no longer getting this error, but we are sort of getting a, a warning because this the certificate which we use to sign our partial script, it's not uh, trusted by this. Uh, I mean, this publisher is still not trusted by our machine. That's the reason we are getting this warning. So, what I, but if you uh, uh, press R, then obviously it's going to run, right? But we don't want our users to get this warning. We want the scripts because the script is trusted. It's digitally signed by our own internal PK server. We want it to just run because it's trusted, right? So in the next step, we are going to fix this, all right? So if you go here, and this is the partial script which we use to uh, sign the uh, uh, script. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to export it. And you don't have to export it with the private key. Don't do it with the private key, just export it without the private key. And we'll save it in base64 encoded. And we'll save it here. So let's call it code signing cert, right? And we'll save it here. Finish. So next, what you are going to do is you're going to have to install this certificate uh, in the one second. In the trusted publishers folder. Now you could do it manually, but in case you have a lot of machines doing it 
manually is going to be very painful. So in this case, what we're going to use is group policy, right? So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to create a group policy and I should already have it in place. Okay, so I'm going to use this one, PK auto enrollment. So what I'm going to do here is I'll edit this. Okay, or better, I'll not use this. I'll create a new policy. One second. Let me use this one. I don't need this one. Okay. So let's edit this policy. We'll go to policies, Windows settings, security options public key policies and then here we are going to select the trusted publishers folder right click and import the certificate which we exported in the previous steps right so this is my code signing certificate next trusted publishers is the right folder next and finish so it's going to take some time to import the certificate not more than a few seconds though right So now what you can see is the certificate is added here, right? So next, what we're going to do is we'll go back to our Windows 10 machine and we're going to do a GP update course. All right, so computer policy update has completed successfully and the user policy as well. So now if you go back to the snap-in and if we refresh it, we can see the certificate is successfully installed. And this is our code signing certificate to confirm. We can look at the enhanced key usage. All right. So now if we run the script, which was earlier giving this warning or this error, right? So if we run the script, it runs without any warnings or any errors. So now, wherever you're going to run the script, you need to make sure that this code signing certificate is installed. All right, otherwise you're going to get uh, errors or warnings. And uh, one, one way to work around this error would obviously be to change the execution policy from all signed to uh, maybe unrestricted, but then that's again a security risk because uh, uh, you know, you would be running uh, a certificate which is not digitally signed. So that is not recommended. All right. So I hope this video helped you. Uh, if you. If you like this video, please do subscribe to my channel and do like the video. Thank you so much. And I'll see you next time.